Now we're going to briefly look at the budget line and the indifference curves. And um, this is exactly how the cons uh, consumer will make his decision on the quantity that he's going to buy. Right. So this is how we start. We will start this lecture by saying that we have two products that the consumer is going to buy. So the two products is product A, which is maybe Apple, and then product B, which is maybe banana. Right. So for us to draw the budget line, we have to, first of all, know how much is the consumer's income and how much is the price of each. So therefore, for the interest sake, I can just say the price of apple is 5 rand and the price of banana is 2 rand. Right. So if the price of apple is 5 rand and the price of this one, now we need to know the income because if we do not know our income, therefore we cannot budget. So our income appears to be 100 rand. And now we know the income. We know the price of good A and the price of good B. And now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw a diagram. This line here represents the quantity of apple. And then this one here is going to be the quantity of banana and this will be the origin now first of all what we do is we ask ourselves that if we take our income and 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 with the income we buy only apples how many are we going to afford and the answer is income divided by five rent so therefore the answer here is going to be 20 of course because if you say income divided by price of apple you can write it this way, it's fine, or you can write 20 because our income is 100 and price of apple is 5, so it's 20 apples. So in that way, it means if we are using our income to buy only apples, we're going to afford only 20 of them. But now the other question is, if we are using our income now to purchase only bananas, how many are we going to buy? And it appears here that now here is going to be income divided by the price of bananas. And then what happens now is you write income divided by PB, which is price of bananas, or you can just write 50 because 100 divided by 2 is going to be 50. And then I'm going to join these nice lines here. Now I join these two points here with a line. And the name of this line here is called um, um, a budget line. Now here this is a, a budget budget line. So anything that is outside, like what? I can just say any point, like this point here, I just say I call it point A, this point here I call it point B. So now I just say any point. Now, whether it's the point on the intercept here or is any point in between here, A, B, or C. So I'll just write it down here to say point A, point B, or and point C, all these are, are four affordable so we can afford them and anything that is inside here point e and point f and then point e and point f they are inefficient inefficient but they are still affordable We can still afford them. They are still affordable. We can still afford them. So, this is fine. We can still afford them, but they are inefficient because they are giving us some change. Now, 
which means we will strive to be on the budget line. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to push this one upward a bit like this. And now say, what is the slope of the budget line? The slope of the budget line is negative the price of what is on the horizontal, which is PB, divided by price of what is on the vertical, which is PA. That is, this is the slope. So look at this. This is the slope of this line. So therefore, if you look at the slope of this line, it means what? It means that the slope does not have an income. So therefore, if income increases, it cannot change the slope. So therefore, an increase in income, I'm going to show it here. This is my budget line. So if I increase the income, it's going to shift upward like this. It's just a parallel shift. This is quantity of A and then quantity of, of B. So now, obviously, now you know that if you decrease your income, then this will come in what? Now, the question now is, what happens now if the price of B decreases? And I'm just going to show it here by saying, now let's say the price of B decreases, but everything else remains constant, constant. So then in this case, we can see that this is quantity of A, quantity of B, and then this is the original budget line. Now, if the price of this one decreases, now instead of 2 rand, now price of B now becomes 1 rand. So remember this was 50 because it was 100 divided by 2. So now if the price goes down to 1 rand, now it's going to be 100 divided by 1. So therefore it will be a very big number which comes here and now we see the rotation outward of the budget line. But if the price of B increases, now we, see, we will see the rotation inward. And remember this, and, and this is what I've been saying in lectures again and again, that if the curve is becoming flatter, it means the slope is becoming smaller. So which means this new budget line that you see here, it has got a smaller slope because now it's less steeper but this one has got a bigger slope so therefore it means if this budget line is shifting inward like this therefore the slope is becoming bigger so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to introduce the indifference curves and with regard to the indifference curves now what i'm going to do is i will just say that these are the indifference curves and what is happening now is that, remember, we've got apples here and we've got bananas here. So the indifference curves always, we say, they must be convex to the origin, which means they must be this way. All these points here, point A, point B, point C, A, B, C, they are all on the same indifference curve, I1. So they all mean the same level of satisfaction. So therefore, this indifference curve is measuring satisfaction or level of happiness or as i always say the level of joy but when this indifference curve shifts to the right and then now we've got the upper indifference curve here and then now on it we have point d and then we've got point e now it means point e and d and e now they are on the upper indifference curve but when d and e they are on the upper indifference curve and then they means the same level of satisfaction but all this satisfaction we see here it is better than the satisfaction that we see on the initial indifference curve right now i'm going to combine the two so that we can see how consumer how we reach the consumer equilibrium so what i'm going to do is now i am going to combine that in two indifference curves the first one is going to be, I'm going to combine the indifference curves and the budget line to see what do we get. And this is what we find. Right. So first of all, we, 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 we draw the budget line. And, and and we draw this one here. And now, remember, 
what we do is we find this one point here by dividing income by price of A. We find this one here by finding the price, the income divided by the price of B. And then, and then, and then, and then we draw this line here. It's called the budget line. Any point on the budget line is what? Is affordable. Any point on this one is, is, um, um, any point below is inefficient and is still affordable. But anything outside this line is what? Unaffordable or unattainable. Right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the first indifference curve this way. And I'm drawing this carefully because I'm looking at this point here, which is A. I'm looking at this point here, which is point B. And I want you to look at this carefully because now this one is the indifference curve one. So what is happening here is at point A, we have the slope of the indifference curve here is steeper. So now, what is the slope of the indifference curve? Look at this. Slope of the indifference curve is also called marginal rate of substitution. But at point A, the slope of the indifference curve is greater because it is steeper than the slope of the budget line, which is PB divided by PA. And you must see what, how I'm doing this. Now, but the question is, what is this marginal rate of substitution? Marginal rate of substitution is actually calculated by the following formula. Marginal utility of product B, look, B is on the horizontal, divided by marginal utility of product A, and then, and then this is, greater than price of bananas divided by price of apples. So this is still the same. So you can see that this is actually still the same. So now, they all these things, remember, they are at point A. But now, at point B, the opposite is true. Because look at the point B now. Uh, the, the indifference curve now is flatter. And now the, 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 what, the... Budget line is steeper. So now I will just put this here and say at B, the opposite is true. The opposite is true. So now you know what I mean because I already explained. But now when I push this indifference curve a little bit further and then now I only have this one touching here with one point and then it goes up. Now I'm, I have indifference curve too. So now I have this equilibrium point here and I'll just put point E. So, at point E, the two slopes are the same. So, at point E, because at point E, marginal utility of B divided by marginal utility of point A is equal to price of B divided by price of A. So, if you look at this, you can cross multiply and divide and then you will see that it will work out M U B divided by BP is equal to MUA divided by PA. And remember, when you divide marginal utility by its price, it gives you weighted marginal utilities. So therefore, here we are saying the two weighted marginal utilities are equal. That is what we are saying. We are saying the two weighted marginal utilities are equal, which is at point, at point E. That is where the equilibrium is. Now, the take-home point here is that we are saying that um, price, the ratio of prices is equal to the ratio of marginal utilities. What is the ratio of prices? The ratio of prices is the slope of the budget line. What is the ratio of marginal utilities? The ratio of marginal utilities is the slope of the indifference curve and it is also called the marginal rate of substitution so therefore you must go again ladies and gentlemen to go and play these videos uh, over and over again until you understand the concept of marginal utility you understand the concept of the marginal rate of substitution the budget line and the indifference curves I'm going to thank you very much because now I can see that uh, 
everyone is getting tired. Thank you and prepare very well.